Hello and welcome to episode one of a new series for Total War Attila. This is going to just be a regular Let's Play series on my channel, not a narrative Let's Play for those of you who are familiar with the March to the Sea Vandal series also going on my channel at the same time. Just an aside, there will be a new episode of March to the Sea hopefully coming out sometime early this week. Just haven't had a, a time really to finish it up yet. So... I'm going to try this new Desert Kingdoms expansion pack, or I guess they call it Empires of the Sand. There's a number of factions that are available, including the Lachmids, which I believe are the free LC faction, the Himyar, which are the one that I'm going to be playing here, the Tanukids, which look like they're a horde-based faction, and the Axum, which are sort of an Eastern African faction in Ethiopia. These, are really, these guys look really interesting too, but it looked like this is probably the most popular faction for other YouTubers, so I thought I'd go ahead and try this one here. The Himyar, they've got some pretty interesting things going on as well. So first of all, it looks like their religion is Judaism. I believe this is a new religion, did not exist before the Desert Kingdom's expansion. So I, and I don't know what the trait is for Judaism. We'll have to find a lot of this stuff out as we go through the campaign. <clears throat> so I am playing on Grand Campaign, by the way on hard difficulty and same thing as as usual start year 395 AD this is our starting region down here Zephar be our um, home home province I guess and it classifies this as a normal challenge I'm not sure if I would necessarily classify it as a normal challenge just based on what I already know is in this area which is the Eastern Roman Empire stretching kind of over here and the Sassanids and their satrapies over here. So it doesn't seem easy to me. It seems like you're boxed in on all sides by pretty powerful empires, but nevertheless, we'll give it our best shot. So I'm gonna read this little thing here for the intro. The Sabaean kingdom is diminished and in its place, Himyar ascends. The victorious Shamir Yuharish has declared himself King of Saba, Du Raidan and of Hadramat and Yamant. At his coronation, and no one dares challenge this proclamation. Sibian local power is based in large part on overland trade routes, but Himyar has discovered and exploited new sea trade routes to India, making it the principal economic power in southern Arabia. Much like the neighboring Aksum, Himyar controls the flow of trade along the major trade routes to the east. The militaristic Himyarites relentlessly pursue their aims, particularly when facing the hated Aksumites. So we don't like the Aksumites. Himyar has even recently converted to Judaism, seeming seemingly only to fuel the constant war that rages between them. It has sacrificed much to hold on to a powerful position during a tumultuous time and will surely seize the future by force of will alone. Okay, so it looks like we're an up-and-coming faction and we've converted to Judaism, just to be interesting. We also wear these fantastic-looking metal masks, also to be interesting. <clears throat> Our leader here is Abu uh, Kariba. I suppose this is the fellow. He's pretty cool-looking. So the traits that we get, Desert Kingdoms, This is so this is the same, I think, for all four of these factions that come in the pack. This is, they're all classified in this category of faction. You get the Sun Scorched, which is plus two sanitation for all regions, which is pretty nice ability to have, and Attrition, which makes you immune to desert attrition for all your armies, also very nice to have in the desert. Scourge of the Desert plus 15 melee attack during be desert battle. So that sounds like it could turn the tide during a desert battle. And then lastly, this one looks like a negative trait or, or a penalty, I guess you'd call it a penalty. Fractured Faiths, increased public order penalty. So an increased penalty, I guess that means more negative for religious differences between new, new religions. So sounds like you get penalized in some way for having heterogeneous approach to religion. I do understand, or it is my understanding, that religion plays a big part in the new Desert Kingdom's Empires of the Sand expansion, so we'll have to see how this impacts us as well. So then the faction-specific trait is going to be Desert Warriors, and we get fatigue rate minus 15% for all units, so a little bit more running without getting tired and the Marib Dam, which is a unique fertility-boosting building in the capital. 
And lastly, we get de Desert Saboteurs stops foreign replenishment in regions where armies are present. That sounds uh, exactly like the, the Hun trait, I believe. So it sounds like if we're in, in a region about to um, take out somebody's capital or, or their settlement, then they won't be able to replenish troops while we're there. So that's kind of handy, I guess, uh, too. Although, to be fair, seems like a lot of times as a player, you're moving a lot more quickly than the AI would move taking a given area. But if we get into a, a situation where it's a lot more push and pull and uh, kind of a grind to, to take a settlement, maybe that's gonna be helpful for us. All right, so that's all set. Let's go ahead and get the campaign started here. Uh, I guess we can review the objectives before we get into the game. It might be helpful. So uh, looks like this is the minor victory, 40 settlement, spring 425 survival. That's typical for uh, any faction. You have to control three areas here, Ethiopia, Arabia Felix, and Arabia Magna. I guess Arabia is here and then Ethiopia would be where the Himyar are at. Uh, so it sounds like they're going to be target number one for us. We researched 10 technologies, 60 units in total maintained, and 25,000 wealth from building. So this does not look to be terribly different or special or particularly difficult compared to the existing factions. So this is new here. Instead of having a cultural victory, we've got a pagan victory. Survive until spring of 450, not new. But we have to maintain at least 40% of the following religion, which would be Semitic paganism. Control 55 settlements, either by direct ownership or through satrapies of military allies. Maintain control of the following four provinces, either by ownership or through puppet, puppet states and military allies. We have to control Ethiopia, Arabia Felix, Arabia Magna. Those are the three we already listed, plus Egyptus, which is up here. So, not really a lot more territory to control. Just another 15 settlements, essentially, making sure you get Egypt beyond the minor victory. More wealth from building, 16 civil technologies. So this looks very doable as well. Don't know how difficult it would be to get the 40% Semitic paganism, but it sounds pretty doable. So the Jewish victory, on the other hand, we have to survive till spring of 450 also, but we have to control 90 settlements. So it's a pretty significant difference, uh, 35 more settlements. Maintain at least 40% of the following religion across all provinces, Judaism. Defeat 10 different factions by capturing or raising their last remaining settlement or subjugate them by making them puppet states. So this is like a military victory type condition. Maintain control of the following six provinces, Ethiopia, Arabia Felix, Arabia Magna, Thracia, Asuristan, and Spahan. I don't, I think these are eastern areas. I have not played the Sassanid, so I'm going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage since I don't know the geography in this area as far as the game is concerned. I don't know the geography in this area that well in real life either, but certainly not in the game. Thracia is going to be up in, in Greece, but I don't know these two. Maintain 100 units in total and research 16 military technologies. I don't know why this is seemingly more difficult than the Pagan Victory app, maybe because you already start Jewish. It looks, looks more difficult to me. You have the divine version of each of these, which look to be like just more and more and more. 130 settlements. That's really high. It's like controlling most of the map. So anyway, I don't know. Maybe we should stay Jewish just to really, you know, push ourselves on that victory objective. Okay, well, let's start the campaign. I'll try to be quiet for the uh, cutscenes and the dialogue as much as possible. I do apologize if my extemporaneous speaking is not as good as what you may have come to expect from the March to the Sea series, because those are all essentially scripted. I've kind of gone through all of the footage and, and created the story in advance. You are the lords of the Arabian Peninsula, inheritors of a proud tradition of Arabic kingdoms. Whereas once you vied for control of the lucrative eastern trade ports, eventually your martial supremacy bent others to your will and created a kingdom combining only the very best elements of centuries of development. Across the water, a threat to your kingdom blossoms. 
The newly Christian Aksumite Empire has lately become aggressive, and their friendship with Rome goes from strength to strength. Ensure their designs on your territory do not become a reality by striking first. Once they are subdued, think carefully about your state religion. Will you return to the roots of your ancestors or uphold the Jewish faith to become a new chosen people? All right. Starting out the campaign, Empires of Sand. New religions. This is a time of radical religious change. Nations abandon old traditions and forge new paths almost overnight. Split religious chains allow you to exert much greater control in that area, essentially if you wish to access religion-specific buildings, units, victory conditions, technologies, and events. However, these changes are not welcomed by all. Factions following new religions suffer severe public order penalties uh, from the presence of rival faiths. Use priests, technologies, governors, and buildings to crush dissenting voices and spread your chosen religion across the land. Mission issued. Chapter 1. They made ready for war. Same thing everybody gets. Survive till spring of 400 and you get 2,000. Get several bonus objectives too. We already went through the victory objectives, so let's check these out. Maintain 15 units in total. Have a current total of 13, so that doesn't seem difficult. Research centralized authority. This would be the very first civil technology for two turns, also a fairly low bar to clear. Hold the following settlement Omana. Omana the way. Yeah, I guess that's a pun. All right, Omana is over here. It's held by the Mazun. I don't know if they're their own faction or not. Hmm. They've got a settlement over here too, so maybe we're going to be going war, going to war with the Mazun as well. Make peace with the Eastern Roman Empire. Himyarite rulers have long fostered good terms with Rome. King Cherubel is said to have been a particular friend of the Roman emperors and they exchanged gifts often. And lastly, putting the boot in. Ensure that your following factions that the following factions have no military presence within your territory, the Tanukids, so these guys that look like ninjas or terrorists or something with their covered faces. I have to keep them out, that, that's the Horde faction. Well, they're pretty neat looking as well, but we're sticking with uh, a little bit more conventional faction. I don't want to play Horde just because I feel like it doesn't do well with the family tree mechanics. You wind up with a lot of extra, you know, people that don't have anything to do in your family tree since you don't have governors. So I'm going to start with the technology levied troops here. Um, let's us build the infantry quarters. I think this may be a little bit different or even difficult for me. I'm used to playing barbarian factions in this uh, Total War Attila which their military buildings are all kind of wrapped up in everything else. So it looks like I'm gonna have to pay attention to what I'm building on the military side here. And then we'll also get the desert spears, better than the levy. Seems like everything's better than something named levy. Hmm. So some sort of religious based uh, upgrades for cash here. It's kind of neat. Well, this one you get two experience for levy units. Sort of bizarre. Unit experience for non-levy units. Trying to sort of see where do our really fancy units come from. They're talking about armored Hemirite Shotalai. On that one, that's a 10,000. The Desert Chieftain for 10,000 there. Fancy skirmishers, mounted skirmishers. All right. And we'll have to sort of pay attention to the buildings too, since the buildings determine what you can produce. Just have to remember to get this one before 400 AD. All right, that's it for the technology. Let's see who's in the family tree. Here's our faction leader with his fancy mask. Sort of the, the Saxons of the Middle East here with that mask. Um, 
43-year-old, 51 influence, general in Arabia Felix, the king of kings. Got plenty of influence in case I want to do something. Let's see what he's got. Marksman. That's kind of interesting. Unit experience for missile recruits. I, I kind of like that. Cunning in public order. All right. He's got war cry. A good one. All right, so our faction leader is pretty good. Hassan, 25-year-old son, logistics export expert, uh, replenishment rate. So another military commander type guy. Handler, agent recruit experience and decreased recruitment cost. That's pretty nice. In the local province. So I think that means if he's present in the province as a general or if he's the governor. I think he'll have that effect, so maybe he'll be a governor. The son who hasn't come of age yet, 13-year-old Zora. Two guys, him your right, elders outside of the family. A relentless attacker, this one, and another logistics expert here. Okay, let's see if anybody... I think he is going to wind up being our governor, so let's just go ahead and do that. And he needs a wife. We'll we'll take a look and see. Let's see what factions are available uh, that may have brides available for Abu Kariba's sons. No one's particularly friendly. So the Mazun are here. Oh, I guess I was wrong. It's not the Mazun. The Mazun are separate. Mazun and Macron, they have similar colors. They're across from one another here. So the Mazun are in our province and we control, looks like two settlements or regions within this province already. This probably is the third one needed to complete it. Alright, so no one's particularly happy with this. The Mizun, we know we're going to be taking them on soon. Probably sooner rather than later. The Macron. Let's see, they're a puppet state. They're a puppet state. Ooh. The Lachmids are a puppet state. Maybe we could make friends with these guys, although we do need to take Arabia Magna. Maybe we can make them allies. It'd be a nice buffer with the Sassanid Empire. Let's see if they have any... Welcome, honored emissary. Speak, could and I will trade. answer they, they're not interested. my master's voice. Well, they're a puppet state, too. Hmm. Okay, and the Axum we know we're not friendly with. All right, so we have no options. There. Why don't I keep... We'll go ahead and make him a Castellan. Construction cost and public order. That's pretty handy. Personal influence, upkeep cost, and replenishment. Recruitment cost. Melee defense. Integrity all forces. So it doesn't look to me like any of these are specifically for governors, except maybe this one. So I can put any governor in this lower spot and get the public order bonus. And then construction cost, it says all regions. So as long as these two spots are occupied, I'll get that, I'll get that bonus. So we'll have Hassan. Okay, well, maybe we've got enough influence. I'll probably save. He's 25 and he's 20. Hmm. Who's young? Well, 25. Probably save him to become retainer to Abu Kariba so that he can get some experience along with his father. 
don't know why he chose the younger son to be the heir, but whatever. So we can't do that yet because they're both the same level. He's got to be higher level. So instead, we'll have him seek a wife. How much is that going to cost? 20. That would expend most of his influence, so I'll, I'll hang on to him. We'll just wait. Iliafa, statesman, probably put one of these other guys into an army. Mm, 34. Don't know if I want the relentless attacker. It's not, not a very impressive morale bonus, but it is a morale bonus, and replenishment of two is like negligible. We'll just stick him there, I guess. All right. I think that's going to do it for there. All right, let's look at our province. I'm totally lost in the Middle East. All right, Zafar. We have Zafar and Udiman. We've got sanitation not doing so well here. And it's doing okay there. And Omana has the spices. All right, we can put an edict in place. I do apologize if this is slow. I don't know what any of these things do, so I'm kind of learning as I go. Eastern Enlightenment research rate, sanitation. That might be the one to go for. We need some sanitation. Recruitment cost for non-mercenary. That might also be helpful. Recruitment capacity. Trade and industry, wealth. Decreased religious influence. Military fervor. Religious influence increase. Army recruitment capacity and replenishment. So this looks like if we're making an army, we're going to do this one. If we've already got a large army, we're going to go for that one. If it's a trade province, we'll go for that one. Eastern Enlightenment. Looking for construction cost. Like the barbarians. So I've got 2,600 per turn that I'm getting. Might go slightly negative just so that I can kind of get a couple of decent sized armies. So let's go mass conscription and we will see if we can raise another army I think I want to go after the the Axum across here and get that spice port from them We've got undeveloped land here too so maybe we want to make something there Torah Shrine, or we can turn it into Semitic Paganism. I'm going to stick with Judaism. I'm making a, an executive decision now. We'll go for the uh, Judaism victory route, even though it looks more difficult. That one gives research rate. This one gives wealth and public order. Hmm. Good bit of research rate there, though. 10% even at just the second tier. Just agricultural and animal husbandry. And I think the Judaism shrine is probably better with that research rate. All right, we'll stick with that. The food consumption, where we had on our food, 20. So we don't have that much surplus, so we can't upgrade yet. Bizarre. This one does the road development, wealth... Lots of wealth, that's a nice one. Infantry quarters, can I get spies? I can get spies, it's excellent. I can get spies and priests, wow, to start out with. And the Marib, oh, so this is our special building, tier one Marib Dam, 25 irrigation, so five fertility bonus, wow, in this province. So my province must have spectacular fertility. And then this infantry quarters, I have to remember Balfa Warriors. Looks like they have axes. I like axes. So we'll Desert Bowman too. So that's nice. Good one. All right. And then this one just gives us the Desert Levy. 
wheat fields. So it's giving us a lot of food for our, due to the Marib Dam. And I've got a jetty here. Just road development, a little bit of wealth, more garrison. So the things I might upgrade, either go for the, it's not that much, 100 additional wealth there. The wheat farm would cost me 2,000. The jetty might go for that. Maybe a trade jetty. Be 900 versus 225 for so a pretty significant jump in the I can't quite handle the squalor or the public order yet so let's develop this levy camp more fields I could get mm, religious building companionship tents it's a lot of wealth minus seven state religion I don't think we want that if we're going to stay uh, Judaism. Local industry for wealth. Public order and Judaism. Well, for sanitation and growth and public order. So maybe I should go with the well. Or the local industry. I'll get a well. All right. It didn't cost us too much. So the old men of the desert, we're going to move them out this way. We fight for you, my lord. Your next command, my lord. All right. And I was going to raise an army. If anybody here is any better. This would be a good governor, merchant. Logistics, logistics. All right, so Ilyafa, you're hired. For Put him in the I city. Hourly patrols. And we'll go ahead and recruit for the old men of the desert since they'll probably be embarking next turn. So I've got some levy and some axes here. Those are pretty good. Armor piercing and armor with a good missile block chance. Those are those look fantastic. They're expensive. 235 a turn. Ashum, very light bow infantry. Got some decent bows here. Got a missile block chance. Actually, that's kind of nice too. Hurlers and some camels. So, well, let's get some more hurlers. Fight for our and maybe cause. another one of those axes. A noble cause Two more axes. Requires noble men. Just one axe. One axe and one spear. So I'll give us three of each. Um, maybe not that many hurlers. Let's get a fourth. Oh, I don't know. I like these axes. We'll get a fourth axe. A and glorious thing. All right. To fight for our cause. Ready so for I've orders. recruited all that I can. Let's see what we can get agent-wise. I have 1,700 left, so I can get one of these two. So, a spy. Infiltrator. Unit experience for cavalry. Or cunning. Cunning. Authority or inspire populace for public order. This one probably would be the one to go for. So let's recruit this priest. It is an honor to serve you. He's already level two. I think because I've got my governor in don't have any equipment. Let's see here. So I can probably upgrade this to get more public order. And 
we'll do more hmm, more religion for now. All right. I've spent a lot of money. Anything else I need to do? Let's check one more thing before we're going to end the turn. We'll check out. So we're 70% Judaism, and it is going up, so that's positive. And our Imperium level is insignificant. I have all of the armies I can have. I could build a fleet. That's it. One priest, I can get a spy. I can't get champions yet, so pretty much maxed out there but until we take more territory or, or do something. All right, let's uh, end the turn and see what happens. <clears throat> Not much happening, it looks like. We're being left to our own devices for now. So uh, Iliafa got his office, and so did Amru. So they're both Castellans. Constructed well, and Edict issued mass conscription. conscription. All right, so let's get the old men of the desert um, out of the now. desert and into the water. Ready for battle. And the horns of Gurzil over this way. At your command. It's got a little bit of a negative public order penalty, Ready but not too bad. Orders. Minus six is all. Still got a pretty decent income. I'm about to Ready for ruin that though with these guys. Um, My words are yours to die so I'm take Amru. That's going to be confusing. Is that two Amrus? Yeah, there's two Amrus now. It's already confusing. All right, so move him this way because I'm going to send him over here eventually. Um, but for now, we'll just use him to improve the public order here. So now we're in the positive. Now, sanitation has been fixed. Squalor of three. So total sanitation of one. My food is not really up to the task here yet, but if I upgrade this one, huge bonus in food, 40 more food if I do that. So I would be able to afford this if I upgrade that. Um, but I may want to do the trade jetty first. Question is, well, I'm not going to have enough. I won't have enough for that. I really won't have enough in any of this. If I build my army. All right, forget it. Ready for orders. What do we have in the way of oh, mercenary honors are too expensive. Nothing too spectacular here. All right, so let's do some recruitment. We'll get um, some desert levy. Off the warriors, no desert bowmen. Desert Hurlers. What else? I can have two more. One more each of those. So that'll be a that'll be a reasonable sized force uh, within two turns. So they won't be quite ready to join our faction leader uh, just yet. All right, let's check out the diplomacy again. No change. See if the Macron want to trade with us. Greetings, friend. No. Let um, how about the Sassanids? Welcome, friend. No. Let us oh, that would make an excellent. Uh, oh, that would make an excellent wife for our for our faction leader. They're not too interested. Oh well. 
Unreliable and hates rival empires. That sounds bad. Okay. And I don't know there's much else I can do. I have one more turn left on our research. All right, we'll end the turn. So far, pretty uneventful. I wonder if this is the Marab Dam here, this black pool or whatever it is. Almost looks like coal. Looks like a resource. No, you can't. Uh... I don't know what it is. Well, if we get another population surplus, maybe we can we can see whatever it is we're missing here. Oh, maybe up here. Here we go. Lead. Okay, it's lead. I don't believe I've had lead before. Actually, there may be lead in um, Britannia. I don't remember what it does. All right, finish this technology. Armor, blacksmith, and carpenter. I bet those make good military units. And this would improve our levy units. I'm kind of confused how... Maybe there's other... There may be other... <laughs> this is so confusing. The levied troops replaces your levy. And this it gives you experience for levy after you've replaced your levy. I don't know what to make of that. Um, cavalry recruitment cost. I don't even know where I get cavalry from at this point. Uh, noble estate. Trade customs. Stables. Oh, I bet it's from stables, so probably an agricultural building that I don't have yet. So maybe we'll build some of those when we capture another territory. <clears throat> okay. So let's go with this one. Equip trade. Kind of. Well, the Baltha defenders replace Baltha warriors. Well, I certainly want more axes, so maybe that's work our way down down here first. I um, wonder if you have to buy both of these. I guess you have to buy both of these before you get the tier one bonus. It's kind of a bummer. It's a lot of well, it's a lot of money if you want to uh, get these bonuses here. So maybe it's not worth it for these guys. Or at least be a lot easier to get the civic uh, tier tier bonuses here for recruiting. Uh, excuse me, researching all of the technologies in a given tier. Okay, um, faction air faction. Excuse me, faction leader. Move them across the water. Still recruiting here. Could upgrade the well, upgrade the wheat farm, or maybe wait. I might wait next turn and get the trade jetties, provided our squalor is going to be okay. It's still sanitation six squalor. Oh, we got tons of sanitation here, so I can definitely get these uh, trade or military jetties. I think. Well, it wouldn't be a bad place to have a military port necessarily, uh, just so I can make ships and send them uh, around here. This would be a better military port, or even that. So let's let's wait on the military port. We'll probably, I'll build a trade jetty next turn. So 700 plus 2400. That'll put me at a little over 3100. Uh, certainly not enough to buy a spy this turn, although I would love to have a spy. I'll, I'll forego it for now. He's got to stay here. 
How much does this cost? Ready for battle. 81. So I would have enough if I upgrade both of these. 160. Yeah. I'll upgrade our desert spears. Should have just enough. Doing a lot of um, unit recruitment, but this is one of the sort of least eventful starts to a uh, campaign that I've had. And almost, almost invariably, your uh, first move is to attack somebody. So units recruited, uh, twenty-eight eighty-six to twenty-eight eighty. I don't know that I could have cut it any closer than that. All right, so I've got all my units. I don't have any money to get any more. Let's move him into the sea. Let's move him out of the sea. And we're trespassing. Just wait uh, until next turn. Maybe I can get these guys into reinforcement range and hit them with both. The screams of the desert. What are my guys called? The old men of the desert and the horns of Brazil. That sounds uh, fairly pagan, but whatever. We are trespassing. Let's take a look here and see if anybody needs to do anything. Nobody has a wife. I'm thinking I'm going to get one here. Who doesn't like the Axum? Nobody cares about them much. Since nobody has any uh, enemies, which is making it difficult to kind of blade them off against one another. Um, let's change our let's change our edict since we don't need this anymore. Uh, let's see, wealth from commercial, wealth from industrial. That sounds pretty beneficial. Sanitation and research rate. The research rate there is like negligible, two percent. So that's probably for civic. I'm not even researching civic, so this is fairly useless for me. Especially since I built the well. Military fervor, I'll get a recruitment capacity, religion, uh, punishment. So it looks like that's our only good choice there. How can I serve you? I wonder do I need the public order here? Well we'll just we'll just suffer through the public order. Penalty minus five. Not too bad. We'll get it under control. I think. Maybe maybe by upgrading that. Alright. Turn. It's already gone through a year. There are not enough funds in your treasury to build anything this turn. Increase taxation and trade, or disband redundant arms. Good idea, taxation. Should I increase taxation? That's under here. Yeah, army up keeps killing us. So minus one public order, or minus ten public order versus minus, so that's another six public order. I don't know if I can tolerate that. 
the growth penalty, decrease immigration. It's not as significant. It doesn't actually boost my income that much. Uh, let's move these guys. Oh, uh, let's see. We're just we're just gonna make it. Yes, declare war. I'm sorry, Axum King. Your nose is too big. All right. War it shall be, if that is your desire. I hope that you have already paid the mourners. So they've got uh, this fleet or whatever it is. And a little tiny garrison. It's not worth the trouble. Balanced auto resolve. Lost 97 men. Um, we can occupy. It's not worth it. Occupy. You have further orders? We fight for you, my lord. Sound the drums. Go ahead and move these guys on to land. Disembarking. The force march. Waiting for more orders. Slash double time. All right. Um, Viceroy. Some cunning and public order and... Maybe go ahead and get this marksman up to bonus of two. Or should I go with recruitment cost? Overseer. Campaign movement range and authority. They all seem good. Let's go with the... Um, Yeah, we'll go with marksman. Get as much experience as possible out of our recruits. Let's get it is an honor to serve you. Priest moving this way. And there is very little else I can do. Uh, year 396 diplomacy. It's like very little. Very little change on the diplomacy. Eastern Roman Empire. They're not happy with us for some reason. Welcome, worthy guest. I trust you bring words that will enhance the honor of your people. Non aggression in our pact. Eye. What, uh, I forgot what the objective was. The objective was to make peace with the Eastern Roman Empire. Well, how can I make peace if I'm not at war? So I have to start a war and then I have to end it. Hmm. Well, it may not be worth it. Okay. Maybe they have the day's greetings. Princess to you. available. Speak, for you have my attention as the ear of the August people. They're not interested anyway. Okay. See what uh, a duelist repair. Oriental docks. So this is a pretty good um, economic port here. Spice port. Um, five spices. Road development, maritime commerce. I think it's maybe decreased because it's damaged. These may repair automatically, I'm not sure. I may have wasted that money there. Uh, let's just, we'll see if it repairs on its own. Alright, uh, we'll see what the Axumite response is. 
It's like we're going to have a rebellion in short order with the minus 53 public order. So maybe what I can do is um, take out one of the Eastern Roman Empire's tributaries, which would start a war with them, and then maybe I can start a war with the Sassanids, and since they don't like the Sassanids, uh, noteworthy. Since they don't like the Sassanids, maybe that then would uh, let me get the peace with them for that extra thousand. It's a little bit risky going to war with the two two of the top three great powers. Uh, so we got to have more armies, more fleets, more governors, uh, same number of agents. All right, so that's gone down by quite a bit. Why is the public order so awful? Religious differences, so that must be what they were referring to in this thing here, fractured faiths. Oh, that's why it makes a big difference. Well, that's really going to hurt us as a, a Judaic faction, since I don't know that anybody else is, uh, follows that. Oh, okay. Well, we definitely got to get the priests going then. How can I serve you? You command, my lord. I can assist you further. Uh, Iliafa has leveled up as well. Get that one, and so the construction cost is governed. Recruitment cost is commanded. I'll get this one here. Oh wow, so th this lets me get even more fatigue um, bonus. So I guess with the, I forgot what my unique ability was. Fatigue minus 15, this would give another 20, so 35%, that's pretty impressive. Zeal, so a lot of, a lot of ability for zeal here. At your command. Um, let's sort of venture. Where are their armies? We fight for you, my lord. Get to it, man. Don't know. Try to set up an ambush in case they come back. Let's, uh, let's just On the move, pull my lord. back. Yeah, let's just pull back. In fact, let's Advance. trade some units too. So we'll give we'll give him these good bows that I can't make yet. The horns of Gurzeel. And I'll take the... Actually, we'll just give him two. And that way I can recruit some more of my own missile troops. Give him one of the axes, too. I'll keep the axes. We'll just give him two of the bows. And, um... Need some cavalry. Okay. Nothing I can do here. Spy will cost me a little bit more than I have. Technology wise. Let 
Let's start working on the civic civic technology side. One of these guys can be upgraded. Um, I'm going to leave Amru here since it uh, gives the public order bonus and I'm going to upgrade him to a master of supplies. And then I can also get another another governor. Let's get another governor. Not him. Logistics, merchant, merchant. Right? Yeah. 450. I have to pay for this merchant, but I get another 10 wealth for commercial buildings, which um, this is this province that has the spice port. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm going to pay it. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, so we'll pay that, and we'll issue an edict. Trade and industry. So it did repair the base building. It didn't repair these, though. Looks like they're going to repair, though. We'll just wait. Sorry if you hear a train. There's a train outside. Um, okay. Now I'm moving a little slow here. I think we want... this military fervor to get the state religion up. Another in turn. I don't want to uh, provoke these guys too much more yet. I'm rude. Oh, agent recruitment cost. That'd be really handy. With the public order. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Okay. So we'll end the turn. See if we can pick up a spy next turn. And then. Uh, Maybe put the spy up here somewhere. The Western Roman Empire has joined our list of factions here, it looks like, that we can see. Well, I don't know. Maybe we can't see them. I saw them up here. Uh, looks like rebellion soon. All right. Amru wants to marry... Someone who is not good. Um, no. Unsuitable? No. It's too bad I have to use my influence for that. Uh, damn. I'm burning up this influence. I think it'll, he'll be more loyal if we do this though, so we'll decree it. Alright, so I said I was going to get a spy, so that's what I'm going to do. Conscriptor Cunning. Infiltrate. I don't actually know which of these is better. I know that Cunning helps most of the spy stuff, or I think it does. Uh, infiltrate sounds good. It's only 5% difference, though. Cavalry unit recruit experience. Hmm. Well... We'll just go with this cunning. A man has many faces. So he should already... Yeah, it starts with four points. That's nice. So authority... Extra authority, less zeal. Sounds okay. 
poor background, integrity, and public order. Hmm. So... Let's, um... We'll boost his infiltrate. Misdirect. Surveillance. Um, let's investigate corruption, which we don't need that much, but we need it to get to assassinate. Or extort. Exploit corruption. I wonder if we could exploit corruption in this Sassanid or, or um, Eastern Roman Empire. I haven't really tried to do this. Let's we'll buy it and see what I can do with it. Okay. Um, the priest needs to come here. Even though we're probably going to have a rebellion. Start that. Uh, looks like it'll just be under rebelling. Minus 19. Now, did these guys bring any forces back? No, they didn't. So, I can't take it this turn, but I can put it under siege. So, one turn for those, two for those. Ladder. Take uh, take some ladders and some battering rams. None will escape. Put it under siege. Hold this guy here. Oh, well, taking my faction leader out. Hmm, he must have had a public order bonus. Caused a problem here. So this is going to rebel regardless. So might as well move move these in. At once. Make haste, men. Let's move them here. On the move, my right. lord. Don't have enough money to do anything else. Um, everyone still hates us. And let's see, I need someone to become a castellan. This he doesn't have enough influence. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Well, we're going to get one of these guys to be a retainer. He's not doing anything. He can be a retainer. He needs a little bit more influence to seek a wife. We'll get a wife for him next turn. If we don't, if we still don't have any friends. Unfortunately, I have no no daughters in the family to marry any, any of these fellows in. I, I have no idea where the Axum armies are at, but um, I guess we're probably about to find out. There's our rebels that just showed up. Trade is the gateway to prosperity. The Mazun would like a Will trade agreement. But I need their province. Well, I'm coming back to get it soon. We'll take the trade agreement for now. It's kind of interesting. It looks like we're trading spices for spices. Huh. Okay. Probably gonna have to attack our our one friend here. All right, rebel. 
rebellion. Oh, that sucks. So it was rejected as a retainer. Just wasted that influence. Investment begun. And I can just attack now. Occupy or subjugate. We're just gonna occupy. You have further orders. Right there is the Aksum King. We fight for you, my lord. So maybe we set up an set up an ambush. Fifty-five percent chance there. We fight for you, my lord. Necessarily want to engage these guys just with this one army. Ready for battle. Wish I had my my king able to get over there. Missile attack. Well, that'd be handy for him since he's got the um, bonus for experience for missile morale versus nomads. Battle movement speed, cavalry experience. Um, is there one for ranged experience? I don't think there is. Integrity, it's upkeep cost, that's pretty nice. Hmm, actually, let's get that upkeep cost. Makes a difference. Let's upgrade these the desert spears. Ready for orders. At your command. You call this we'll just move back and garrison this settlement here. And Go with infantry commander in this desert power. Priest is leveled up. Take um, more public order and. Um, Puny rebel army so far. Let's get um, hmm. let's see what this levy unit experience thing. I don't know if that's totally useless. Maybe we'll find out. Spy is ready, and question is, do I want to bring him over here? Why not? It's kind of uh, Probably not bad in a way that the province rebelled this turn anyway, since we'd have such a negative public order penalty from the conquest um, for taking these two settlements back to back uh, 
it's probably not a bad thing anyway. All right. So I didn't successfully get that guy as a retainer. I can try one more time. Let's try again. And he can seek a wife. All right, let's end the turn once again. So the Axum came up here, but they didn't attack. And for whatever reason, I've accidentally moved my poor guys into the port, it looks like. Which I didn't want to do. Ah, back-to-back -back rejection. Um... Hmm. Got married, I don't know who to. Attitude plus 10 with Nobatia. Or Nobatia. Due to the closeness of our borders. Hmm. It's too bad because I was gonna attack them. Alright, so we have. A bit of money. I'll move him back in the city. Tell you what, we're at about an hour now, so find out next time what we're going to do about the Children of the Sun, General Eon Bisianaf, what remains of the Aksumite forces. So I hope you've enjoyed the first episode of the new uh, Himyar series I'm starting. And I am going to try to upload this regularly. Shouldn't take nearly as much time as as March to the Sea. The Frank series I, I know is still on my channel. I'm just letting that one go for, for the time being. A lot of people have, have the Franks uh, uploaded playthroughs. And I have actually been playing the Franks through. I just haven't been saving the footage or, or speaking while I play it. So anyway, if you have any uh, comments, please feel free to leave your comments, or if you like the series, give a like, or if you want to subscribe, that'd be fantastic too. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.